Hi Camilla, and let's break down your animations and the sketches. Sorry for the delay. So let's focus on these ones first. Uh, overall, nice studies in color. Uh, you've got some volumes there. I've got the shape language. We definitely can improve it. So let's focus on the most important parts. Uh, so first, let's talk about composition symmetry and all that stuff so when we are planning uh, our sketches and our animation one of the most important parts uh, is keeping it interesting and keeping it balanced so when we are dealing with uh, these volumetric effects uh, the most important thing to avoid is to repeating uh, the shape with different colors so as you're adding colors each new color should add something else to the composition and to uh, to the form and there is also a nice rule to remember it's like uh, there should be a contrast uh, between the distribution of color so usually what does that mean so when we're talking about the effect there is usually a base color. So this is like if you imagine the effect as a whole. So this is the effect as a whole. And then we have base color. We have a secondary color, color. And we have like the third color, the highlight, the focus. So if this is the entire effect, the main color will take up like 70 to 80 percent of the composition it can be less but the point is that it takes up a bit more than a half usually then for example you can have like 20 percent of the second color 10 percent of the third color or you can have like 60, uh, I don't know, 30, 10, or anything like that. But the point is that there is a main color. Uh, then we add some details, and then we add another color, but it should only be reserved to some areas. And that's the thing with colors. So, in terms of color choices, I think that it mostly works out okay. I, I would say that with the red blood right now, so, and with the gray smoke, so the amount of gray, light gray, like this, and the amount of this gray is, is very similar. So, it would be interesting and beneficial to, to increase the contrast between them and the red dark red here and bright red here are also kind of similar proportionally uh, but that's just a tip it's not the main thing the main thing i would talk about is again the distribution of mass and the repetition so if we look here uh the biggest concern is the repetition of the form so this entire smoke is made up of four uh, major masses with similar size and weight that are on the same line and that they have uh, similar lighting. So they are, have the same pattern. And the same thing here. So here the sizes are different, but the shapes are aligned in the same way. So you can notice that all of these are ovals, and all these olives, all ovals, all of these ellipses are aligned the same way. So again, we're creating this repetition, which is uh, not contributing to our design. So it doesn't make it more interesting, it doesn't help sell it and makes it repetitive because everything is aligned the same way and because the shape is the same and the similar scene happens here 
So again, everything is aligned the same way and the masses are similar. So if you look at it, they create a very linear symmetrical composition. And the same thing here. So you're dividing, we have a nice contrast, we have a bigger mass, medium mass, smaller mass, uh, but they're still on the same level. They're kind of creating this um, box and again, creating this repetition. And the same thing happens here. So again, we have the shapes and they're all parallel to each other. So they're all located in one place and they're aligned on the same axis. So everything has the same angle. So we don't get the variety of angles. We don't get stuff like that. We get this. So what, did, what would be an, an interesting solution to that? So we need to make sure that uh, this mass is interact, that we don't create too much repetition and uh, that we have a nice balance of colors. And if we're talking about liquids, we should remember that it kind of combines. If these are bubbles, then they can be like that. If this is liquid, liquid usually combines it combines masses into one bigger mass so it won't have that uh, noticeable definition so usually it will be a single mass with a couple different highlights but it is connected because liquid t uh, tries to keep everything very connected to keep everything intact to keep the form so uh, considering that, what can we do to these sketches to make them even cooler? Let's see. Uh, first, let's start with this red uh, liquid smoke or something else. So, first off, I'll try to make it less symmetrical. And let's Let's try to make sure that the angles don't match exactly. So right now the angles kind of match. So we don't create this kind of effect. We are creating and then like this. And we're not angling it. So it goes like a straight line which doesn't emphasize the form in space. So let's... Don't know the exact reference, so I'll go with that. So I'm trying to create this nice flow and the variety of angles. And with flow, I'm trying to imagine how it will go in space. So this one, it goes to the camera. So it goes from the camera to the camera to the camera. And then it goes back. And since it's liquid or something like that, I'll soften the edges a bit. And we get this. So the most noticeable difference is that it's not symmetrical anymore. So there is no linear symmetry here. And we are not dividing the effect in half. If you look at it, we don't have like a defined symmetry. And there is a clear distinction between the right and the left part. Second thing is that we don't make the lines parallel to each other and we emphasize the form with these additional lines so if we add something it aligns to the form it goes over the form 
sort of showing us how the form actually goes space. And this is kind of a liquid splash. Alternatively, if we are trying to preserve these big shapes and this is bigger splash, it can go into like something between liquid and foam. So it's really angled here. Again, trying to keep it interesting and trying not to make it symmetrical. And again, it's a big, huge splash of some sort. Again, trying to make sure that it's not symmetrical and that the left and the right side are different enough. Now we should remember that it is volumetric, there is some volume and form going on, and we need to emphasize that. So again, some parts should be going to the camera, some parts should be going away. We can angle it a bit and define different volumes within the mass. Maybe there is a shadow underneath like you had. Again, trying to make sure that it's not repeating. Okay, it's not symmetrical. Now we need to add something else to make sure that this part is distinct. And here I would add it in a different spot to make sure that we are not repeating the line that we had here because right here everything is kind of on the same level here so it starts at the same spot you can have a lighter side here you can have a shadow here Okay, but that's if we're making it a big, huge anime splash. I could add some elements here for the contrast and even do something like that. But yeah, this is kind of different ways we can approach that. However, it applies to any kind of design or any kind of shape that you want. So making sure that everything doesn't start at the same place, doesn't go at the same spot, that we have like a nice variety of shapes and the similar shapes are not uh, in the same spot. So right here we have two very similar shapes. And right here, all this stuff starts at the same level. And it is dividing the mass into similar intervals. It's not like exactly the same, but it's not different enough in a sense. So for the water. So this is like a sphere fear or something like made out of water that has a similar shape to that some kind of water magic then it will uh, create a combination 
of different water shapes. And it will unite more, combine more, because water has surface tension and it essentially keeps the form uh, connected. So in a sense, this looks more like bubbles at the moment. We are going for the water, water, the liquid, then it would kind of combine more. Be more like that. Then we have an overall uh, highlight, which depends on the light direction, uh, the shape of the water, stuff like that. And it shows the surface of the water. So we can imagine this like as a couple connected tubes and spheres. And the highlight follows that surface. Then we'll have a general shadow. Some shadows inside the form. And stuff like that. So this is, for example, a highlight. This is a darker zone. This is a slightly brighter zone. Or the opposite, they're interchangeable. So, how could it look? Go with that, even though I don't really like the design. Whatever, just show you the the process. So we have the darker part. I'll use it as a mask. I'll add a highlight, maybe. Can follow in the form. Try to make it kind of bend and create a nice uh, line, uh, S line, X curve, S curve, or maybe C curve. Stripe like that. Okay, let's try something this, like this. So, and then we'll add either a brighter or a darker layer. Mm -hmm. What will work better?
don't think it works that well. But let's see, maybe we can approach it a bit differently. Guess we can try something like. Okay, so do this. Yeah, slightly lighter. Yeah, it works better with a lighter blue here. Yeah, this is one way to do that. Let's see how else we can approach that. Okay, add some indication here. And a form transition. Why did it work correctly? Okay, so that's one method. Let's do the other one, because there are quite a lot of ways to stylize water. So we'll do something like, so there is a mass of water. And the other way is to emphasize the shape with a line across showing the light heating, the water shape. And to have a brighter hue on the dark. So let's add the light here, the light first. Shouldn't be too bright. Okay. 
So we're kind of creating an outline, not repeating all the edges with that lighter color. And we need to vary the width of it to make it interesting. Okay, now we can add uh, our highlight. Can run it across the surface. can do it in different ways, we can do it like that, we can do it with a more complex shape that is changing. Kind of with smaller particles to emphasize the size of it. Like that. Making sure not to repeat the shapes too much. Okay. Now let's see if we can change it up here a bit. Okay, might work, might work. Let's see, kind of works, not in the way that I really enjoy, but it kind of does work. So can we make it even better? Yeah, we can add something else as well to make it even more interesting. So we can add like a third color. Mm, and for a third color, we can add a darker hue of blue. Fourth color, this point. And ideally it can be done in post processing. And considering what we've done, we can change the base color because it's a bit too saturated. Okay, this works right better. Let's change the color here. Slightly darker. And let's change the color here. So something like that already looks a bit more like water. 
Uh, we can definitely go further and stylize it even more because water doesn't have to be like in a single mass. It can go and create some sort of spirals and waves. So it can definitely be more interesting. We can do something like, okay, so here is a base. We can use it to create some foam or some Uh, I guess some foam. And emphasize the form of the water stream with that foam. Again, not making straight lines, but rather bending the lights, lines across the surface emphasizing the structure and the form. Add in some variety to the lines. Is good. Here we can add again some nice directional lines that emphasize the form and the direction. Okay, now save all the scene and play a bit with the form. So it kind of spirals across the form, encapsulating, capturing the water inside. Having some variation, the lines going over the form, making the front edge more interesting. And then this is kind of a spiraling way. If we really want to add more volume to that, we can add some shadows or some bright areas. Because this is add domination. So let's hmm. So there's a shadow area. Maybe even we'll add a bigger shadow area. 
under the pose. Then come to the overall shadows. Now we have more of a water wave spiraling kind of avatar-like effect. So these are different ways to show water. There are definitely more than just the ones that I showed. And the best advice I can give here is just looking at the water, looking at the references from other artists and trying to understand how they work how they divide uh, the light and shadow, how they show it, how many areas of light and shadow are there, how they structure, how many space do they take. And if we are talking about bubbles, then the big thing would be that bubbles are again connecting and combining with each other. So if you see bubbles, they will go one, keeping the shape, and then if there is a big, bigger bubble, it will kind of combine, connect to this bubble. Then you have like a couple smaller bubbles that intersect and combine with that bubble. They can combine like triangle here. And multiple bubbles can combine with each bubble. And again, trying to keep it interesting, trying to keep the shape interesting. And really, if you are thinking about bubbles, it's like they're literally intersecting spheres. So if you're putting spheres inside spheres, like half a sphere inside a sphere, more or less spheres, so it can be like one third of a sphere combined. It can be like half sphere combined with this one in different places again trying to keep it interesting trying to combine like some bubbles go underneath some bubbles go on top and they form groups for example i want to combine this bubble Half the bubble is on top of the other bubble, bubble, and then it goes over the different bubble. So it kind of creates this kind of intersection. And there are small bubbles. making sure it's not getting too repetitive and that there are different types of bubbles at least was that placed in an interesting way So, these are bubbles, we can do something like that. 
and then we can add like different highlights and they don't necessarily have to be always the same angle always the same form and so on and we see how much it volume it adds how much variety it adds so going to the smoke can variety in form variety in size is what will save us so we need to make sure that the bottom parts are not the same So we'll make the top part bigger to increase the contrast, make this part smaller, make this part bigger, make this part uh, slightly different, I guess bigger. Okay, now there is a distinction. So there is some difference in variety. We can add this shape here. And now already, the shapes are more interesting and not as clearly defined in the same way. So now I'll try to make sure that the shadows and all the stuff also support the volume. So, for example, this shadow will emphasize that this form goes on top and in front of the bigger form. And it will like this. Then we need to make sure that these two forms do not look exactly the same. So one will be smaller, one will be bigger. Maybe we can add one smaller form in front of these two. And this form is bigger. So we're defining bigger mass, smaller mass. And they have their own hierarchy I'll add a bigger shape uh, shadow and shape here make sure that the shapes do not repeat and then already you see we have some variation and we have a better design Just by making sure that the masses look different, they align differently, and they don't repeat each other. If I add the shadow, which is this here, make sure that the shadow again doesn't repeat uh, the shapes too much. These two are too similar, so we'll increase the contrast. And again, we are getting the volume through all that. Uh, same thing here. We can do the same thing here. And with the big red explosion, it would be adjusting like the top, making sure that these two shapes do not create this parallel line. So I'll increase one size keep the other side same or smaller angles to us lower part a bit so that they create this nice dynamic feeling make sure that the sizes of the shapes do not match make sure that these are shapes 
are different in size and they follow the form. So they follow the form. And they're not on the same line. Make sure the same here, so that here and here it doesn't divide it equally. So we'll do that. Can make sure that these three forms are not on the same level. Can even increase this part if we want. And that's it, I guess. Now to the animations. So the animations look pretty interesting. Uh, I'd say I like it. It definitely feels like fire. And we can work with that and improve it even more. So the most noticeable scene in the first one uh, is the bottom part and the acceleration. So right now we have a very fast acceleration at the start, then everything kind of slows down and it may slow down a bit too fast. So let's see, kind of hovers in one spot, especially at the bottom. So checking that. Ah, uh, switching to blue. Okay, so we go one, we go two, go three, we got deceleration. Yeah, so the thing is that we have acceleration, we start decelerating, decelerating, but we have a bit of an acceleration here. And then instantly we decelerate a lot. This part starts to go down. This part keeps going up. Accelerates a bit, accelerates a bit, and stops in one spot. Oh, yeah, that's the issue. So you're only moving the internal part, but you're not moving the outside. And then it goes, goes, and then you see it went forward. And then it doesn't go forward. So the edge goes forward, stops going forward, goes down. So the, there was no deceleration here, but the shape just starts, stops going up and goes down. So fixing that would be nice. And I would either keep the white stuff with the same frame rate as the main scene or move them together because right now it creates a disconnect so the external part the the violet like pink wire moves then it stops moving but the internal part continues moving and if it's fire, it doesn't really make sense because fire produces the light itself. So it moves as a whole. And if it's smoke and it's illuminated by something, then it doesn't really feel like smoke because it is uh, light and it's being light up from the inside, from the middle. So I would suggest moving the white stuff on the same frame as uh, pink stuff. Second thing is motion at the bottom. So you see it goes here, accelerates, then instantly decelerates, and this part goes down. And this part decelerates a lot, and then suddenly everything accelerates. And we go from here, and we were going back down, to here and we're going up again and then we slow down again then we go up again so this creates kind of 
an interruption of the motion. So I would suggest to continue the motion, continuing the motion. So go here, then go here, go here, go here, go here, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. This will keep the feeling of the motion, keep the energy flow, and it make it uh, will make it a bit more interesting. And the second thing is, you see, everything kind of goes on the same line. So you get four similar particles, and they're all on the same line. So I would definitely keep uh, the distribution of particles more interesting. So one particle can go here, the other particle can go here, or it can have a different shape. So you see, this is a more interesting composition than the other one because we have variety in particles, we have variety in their placement. And here we kind of end up with particles being symmetrical to each other and on the same line, on the same line, everything in the same spot. And the same thing here, so you break it up into similar particles that go in the same spot. And even here it kind of breaks in the middle. So it would be nice to group particles more differently. And the second thing, it would be nice to move that middle part and to make it uh, less uh, straight or uh, add something. Because right now it's like, it's like this boxy straight line, no difference in width or anything. So it would be way more interesting to kind of make sure that the other part has its own character, has its own shape, and that it's distinct and interesting. And then you can show the movement of it. So with this shape, it's easier to show that it keeps moving forward even as it shrinks, because you have this angle, and you can show that it shrinks, but it also moves forward keeps moving so the next thing is the next smoke it's looking pretty good uh, again some notes about the shapes the shapes are much nicer so we have an acceleration and we have this pointy shapes looking pretty good then we have this kind of shape and i don't have anything like against it however we can definitely make it way better so you see right here we kind of get this line of holes and it tears it apart and it kind of breaks it in half if you look at it these two shapes have exactly the same size then we can have more variety but for two or three frames from here to that point they have very similar shapes And they also stand out because everything else is more rounded, kind of like this, where these are just straight shapes. So how can we change that? Let's see. We want to make it more interesting and we want to vary the width a bit more. And we want to make sure that the holes right next to each other are not too similar. Because if we look at the holes and at the parts, the scale is kind of similar. So let's see, can we try to solve that? I like this big curve. Let's increase the size of this one. And now we get more of a balance. So we have this bigger mass, we have this 
a smaller mass, which creates medium mass, have the smaller masses here. And they're different enough, and they have a similar shape language. Then you can start adding the holes if you want, like breaking it up. But it kind of unites it, unifies it. And then, because of the size difference, we won't get into this situation because it will be different enough. In terms of the motion itself, it looks pretty okay. Uh, one thing is we can polish a bit uh, the deceleration. So it goes like this, slows down. And you can see how it goes one, two, uh, accelerates a bit, slows down, goes, goes, goes. This part looks fine. This part kind of lags a bit. So we go, slow down a bit. Then you see we go in the opposite direction. Then we go forward here again, go to the left again, go to the left, and then we go here so we go up but we don't go to the left then we go to the right so you see we have two points when the pass is interrupted and ideally it should be something like that so we want to continue the motion So here we have a deceleration and then we can slow down quite a lot and accelerate again. Then decelerate again, then accelerate here, and then decelerate here and accelerate again, and decelerate again and accelerate a bit again. So we're kind of creating these slowdowns and accelerations. Uh, so this making the particles more different, especially at this point too, maybe breaking up this a little, a little bit later because everything kind of breaks up a bit too similarly and we get three shapes with similar sizes here. So you see these shapes are similar in size and shape. So if we delay that a bit, make sure that they are slightly different uh, and fix the top, it would be awesome. So hopefully uh, it answers your questions and helps you to learn a bit more about the animation. If you have any questions about new tasks or this breakdown, let me know. Hopefully this is not too boring and tiring to watch. Bye bye. Have a nice day.